Well, we've looked at factoring the greatest common factor of numbers, but what if we start adding some variables to our expression? So I have 6x squared y squared and 8xy cubed, and I want to know what the greatest common factor of these two terms are. Well, we could do the same thing as we did before. Let's do the factor tree of 6. So 6 is 2 times 3. And x squared, of course, just means x times x. And y squared is y times y. So if we write 6x squared y squared as a bunch of factors, it would be 2 times 3 times x times x times y times y. That would be the factors, all the, the factors of 6x squared y squared. We'll do the same thing with the 8. That's 2 times 4, and 4 is 2 times 2. So we have 2 times 2 times 2. And x here is, is simply x by itself. And y cubed would be y times y times y. So 8 x y cubed is really 2 times 2 times 2 times an x and then we had x sorry y cubed so that's y times y times y and again once we have the factors all listed out here let's start with the numbers and look for what's the same I see a 2 here and a 2 here so for the coefficient my number uh, the greatest common factor is going to be 2 now let's take a look at the x's. I see two x's here and only one x here. So I'll be able to pull out one x. And in my first term, if we look at the y's, I have two y's here and there are three y's over here. So in common, we can take two y's out of both of them. And so two x y squared would be the greatest common factor when we factor out um, from these two terms here, the 6x squared y squared and the 8xy cubed. Now we've done questions like this before, multiplying polynomials. Remember we would take the first term and we would multiply it by this first term in the bracket here, so 2x times 3x squared, that would be 6x cubed. And then we take the first term and we multiply it by the second term. So 2x times 7 is 14x. Well, all factoring is, is going backwards. So if I said, let's start with 6x cubed plus 14x. And instead, I want to write this as something times something. So multiplying is when we, we take two terms and multiply them together to get a polynomial. And factoring is when we simply go backwards. We start with a polynomial and we want to write it as something times something. So really this is just looking for the greatest common factor here. So I look, I've got 6x cubed and I've got 14x. And so 6 is just 2 times 3 and x cubed is x times x times x. 14, if I break that down into prime factors, is 2 times 7, and then there's an x there. So it's the factors are 2 times 7 times x. And now I simply got to look and see what would be my greatest common factor. For the numbers, I can take out a factor of 2. And looking at the x's, there's three of them here and one of them here, so I can take one out of both of them. And so my greatest common factor would be 2x. So over here, I'll write 2x times, <clears throat> and once I've, excuse me, once I've divided everything by 2x, you can see what we'd have left. We'd have 3x squared. 3x squared, and then the plus sign. And then what's left when we divide by 2x here? Well, we'll be left with 7. So when we have 6x cubed plus 14x, and we want to write that as a product or something times something, we call that factoring. 
and in this case 2x was our common factor and when we've taken that out we're left with 3x squared plus 7. And the nice thing about factoring is you can always check your answer and make sure you've done it right. So 2x times 3x squared, that would be 6x cubed. Good. It's the same as this one. Plus 2x times 7, that would be 14x. So you've done some multiplying now for a, for a few years. This times this, this times this. Factoring is now when we start to take the polynomial and break it down into something times something. Let's check out another example. 12x cubed y minus 6x squared y squared plus 24x squared y cubed. So I've got three terms in this polynomial and I'm going to start to find out what is the prime factors of all three of these terms. So 12 Breaking 12 down is 2 times 6, and 6 is 2 times 3. So this is going to be 2 times 2 times 3, and then x cubed, x times x times x, and a y. Then the 6, well 6 is 2 times 3, so this would be 2 times 3 times x times x times y times y. And 24 would be 2 times 12, 2 times 6, 2 times 3. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. And then x times x times y times y times y. So this would be the, the factors of the three terms we got here. Now let's see what's the same. We've got a 2 here, a 2 here, and a 2 here. So we're going to have a 2 that's common. Uh, only one, can't, can't take another 2 out of this one. So let's look at the factor 3. Yes, 3 is the same in each one. So we can pull a 3 out. Now let's look at the x's. There's 3 of them here, 2 of them here, and 2 of them here. So it looks like we can pull 2 of them out. We'll call that x squared. So we pulled 2 out there, pulled 2 out there, pulled 2 out of here. And looking at the y's, 1y, 2y's, 3y's. So we can take 1y out of all of the terms. And our greatest common factor would be 2 times 3, which is 6x squared y times. Now, what would be left in the first term? A 2 and an x, so 2x. Then there was the minus sign, so minus and looks like all that's left in the second term is a y and then a plus sign what's left in the third term 2 times 2 that's 4 and 2 y's so y squared and when you finish there should be no letter that's common in all three of the terms so there's an x here but there's no x in this term and this term doesn't have a y but these ones do. So if, if there's an x in all three of the terms, then you haven't taken enough x's out. And if there's still y's left in every term, then you haven't taken enough y's out. And then looking at the coefficients, if there's a number that you can divide all of these by, other than one, of course, then you haven't factored out the greatest fac common factor for the, for the coefficient. I'm going to check my answer. So 6 times 2 is 12. Good x squared times another x is x cubed, good, and y, there's no y's here, so just y, good. Then minus 6x squared times, sorry, 6x squared y times y would be 6x squared y squared, 6x squared y squared, good. Plus 6 times 4, 24, x squared, good, and y times y squared would be y cubed. So I know I factored that one correctly. Let's look at uh, one more example. Let's factor this one here. Now, we could go through and do the factor tree thing, but eventually you might be you know, good enough to just take a look at the coefficients and ask yourself, what's the biggest number I can divide all of these numbers by? And you could say 5. Then you could look at all the x's and say, well, there's two x's here. There's two x's here, and there's three x's here, so I can take two x's out of all of the terms. 
And then you'll take a look at the y's. There's three here, one of them here, and one of them here. So the most you can take out of all three terms would be one y. Whoop. There we go. And uh, now let's see what we have left. When we take 15 and divide it by 5, we'd be left with 3. We've taken two x's out. There was two x's here to start with, so we won't have any x's left. And then we took one y out. There was three y's to uh, start with there, so there'll be two y's left. Minus. 5 divided by 5 is 1. We've taken two x's out, so there won't be any x's left, and we took one y out, so there won't be any y's left. So all we're going to have is the 1. That was the 5 divided by 5. Plus, 10 divided by 5 is 2. There were three x's here. We've taken two x's out, so we'll have one x left. And there was one y to start with. We've taken the y out. There won't be any y's left. So now I'm going to check. I'm going to look at my coefficients. That's good. I can't divide them by anything except 1. And I have some y's here, but there's no y's here. And there's no x's in all of the terms, only in this term. So it looks like we're good. I'll just double check by multiplying it back in. 5 times 3, 15. x squared, x squared. y times y squared is y cubed. Correct. Minus 5x squared y times 1 would be 5x squared y. Good. Plus. 5 times 2 is 10, x squared times x is x cubed, and y, we've, we've got the one y that's left there. So looks like we've, we've done this one correctly, and um, maybe I will show you one other example here before uh, we conclude this video. Sometimes the factor that we will be taking out um, won't, will not be a, a monomial, it might be a, a, a binomial. Now in this example here we have we have two terms. We have this term plus this term here. And we want to see what are the factors of each of these these terms. So in the first term, there's two factors. There's this one and there's x minus 3. 2 times x minus 3. In the second factor, there's a 5 and there's an x and there's an x minus 3. So if I'm factoring out the greatest common factor, I'm looking to see is there any, looking at the coefficients of 2 and 5, is there any number I can factor out of 2 and 5? No. Then I'm looking at, this one has a factor of x, but this one, this term doesn't have a factor of x. But the, the uh, common factor in here is the x minus 3, because this term has an x minus 3, and this term has an x minus 3. So I'm going to take out that x minus 3, and now I'm going to write what's left after I've taken out the x minus 3. So if I pull that out, I'd be left with a 2 plus, I've pulled that out, I'll be left with a 5x. And so that would be the, uh, the common factor in, in these two terms was x minus 3, and I've pulled that out, and here's what was left, the 2 plus the 5x. If we had, uh, let's do 7 and a plus b minus uh, 3b times a plus b. This would be a similar question. I've got a 7 here and a 3 here, nothing the same. But this this term, this first term has an a plus b and so does, so does this. So we can take that a plus b out. And once we've factored that out, I'm left with 7 in the first term minus, and in the second term I'd be left with the, the 3b. So that's factoring polynomials by looking for the greatest common factor.